Hey guys, that's right, D here is back with a brand new episode of Table Cheese with Anton Six and myself. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow, and guess what? Enjoy the show. What's up everybody? Welcome to episode 31 of Table Cheese. Coming at you live in full for like the first time. I don't, I'm not sure we've done this before. I think we did it once live, and it was on your personal account. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're live from the Cheesy Controller account, and D and ooh, I, ooh. we were just getting into Pokemon cards and trading cards and just nerd culture in general. And even though he's hosting this show, I am one of your hosts of the show of Table Cheese. I am D of <laughs> FTO Nerd Talk, so... <laughs> Just give you a help a helping hand on introductions. <laughs> Anton, Anton has a habit of doing intros and uh <laughs> making himself shine a little bit brighter than some of the others on this show. That last intro you did a couple of days ago. That was a few episodes ago, that was hilarious. I think it was like a time crunch thing. Because <laughs> we record our intros at the end. And so like I'm pretty sure the outro and the intro were like just a like, all right, we got <laughs> Minute, <laughs> you gotta go, dude. dude. Rush it up, man. I got you, buddy. <laughs> you did not have me, you did not. <laughs> but yeah, uh, my kids are playing, they're, they're trying to play Pokemon, they don't have 60 cars amongst the both of them. They probably got maybe 50 all together. So I gotta start buying them, I gotta start buying them packs and talking about the cards and learning the lore. And my son has Pokemon Go on his phone now, and I've been telling him about how, how everyone and their grandmother. We're playing Pokemon Go in like what was it? Was it 20, 2013? Was it twenty sixteen? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was twenty sixteen. And I mean, yeah, I mean, like legitimately the everyone. world stood still and everybody was playing Pokemon. It was I could I was the only person who I knew who did not have that on their app. Like I didn't I never oh, downloaded no. it until I, now on my phone. Wow. I was deep. As you can see by the collection of Pokemon plushes. Yeah, no, I was... Is that a, is that a Santa hat on Pikachu back there? Yeah, that is like a <laughs> limited go. edition Christmas <laughs> Pikachu that my sister got me, so... See, that is a fan right there, for sure. That's a I, fan. That Cyndaquil's from Japan. Where, uh, getting the perspective on the camera. Yeah, that Cyndaquil plush is from Japan, so... I think the, the camera's trying to help you out, too, it looks like. Right? <laughs> like, he's moving. We gotta focus. <laughs> Let me know, Anton. Where are we going? He's on the move. <laughs> but, yeah. So, one of the reasons, like, I wanted to do this episode with the Jeff catch up, but then summer game fest happened like yeah. literally today as of recording. And I have this roundup of everything that was announced and I'm just going to kind of use this as an outline, but I think there are some things you'd really be into in here. Well, there's, I, there's one thing that I know for sure you're into if your oh, social wow. media feed has been anything of an indication but I got to start off with my biggest moment of the day because there were also leaks from the Xbox presentation today. <laughs> so we got like a three-day head start on what's going to be at the Xbox show. But for me, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we got the Summer Game Fest trailer. And man, I... They don't even care anymore, and it's awesome. It's like, oh, we're going to try and be cryptic. We're going to try and be... Nah, they're just like, it's two timelines, possibly three. Who knows what happens? Everybody's dead. Nobody's dead. It's... <laughs> and see, here's my, here's my thinking behind it. I feel like, like Final Fantasy is just doing all this because... Like, this is a good year for gaming. Like, I, well, I was on Metacritic. This will be like, so 2024. Far. So they when, the trailer ended with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming twenty twenty four on two discs to PS five. Yes, Do you that, know how massive familiar. of a game that's this has familiar. to be? That's so familiar. <laughs> it was four discs back on the PS, man. <laughs> I think it was three. I have it. Was, was it three? Yeah, I thought it was four discs back then. Maybe we're talking about Legend of Dragoon because that was four discs. Yes, yeah, three. Hold on. Two. Two discs. Two discs. Right, two Blu-rays. 100 gigabyte Blu-rays. Dude, 
That's wild. Yeah. They like, don't even care, dude. And it, it's, <laughs> yeah, so three discs. So Final Fantasy VII Black Label, no big deal. Um, disc one and the manual, and then disc two and three. Here's the kick, though. Like this is just gonna prompt sixteen to be even more popular, but fans knowing that that is happening. That's well, like, I mean, we've I'm, known. They announced so. <laughs> Yeah, but like, but like now we got like now it's real. Now like you can touch it. Now like it's it's a thing now. I it was a thing. That was the crazy part. There was gameplay in the reveal of this game. When they revealed Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at like the anniversary, it was like Final Fantasy VII's like twenty fifth anniversary or something like that. I remember it. Yeah. And they did that. They showed Ever Crisis. They showed the Battle Royale, and they showed. Uh, Crisis. I don't know if I already said Crisis Core, but Crisis Core and Rebirth were Crisis the two big Core. ones for me. And so Crisis Core came out, and that was the that is the single most game that I've yelled on the internet the most about. Like one yeah. of the questions you always get as a gamer is like, "What's the game you wish they would bring back?" And like, they did it. They yeah, did so it. they did it, but then I didn't really play it. I don't remember what happened. <laughs> But there I, was a lot of there was a lot of games coming out when that came out. And like I mean, there's like lost in the shuffle. Yeah. there's so many games coming out all the time. And, it is, and then it was December, so it was like right after Black Friday sales and like Christmas money purchases, and so that's it, it. Yeah, <laughs> and like it's funny because like we were just saying a couple months ago, like how gaming was stale, and now like like we got like what maybe three big games out, like like Street Fighters coming out right around. Well, Street Fighters got, out. I've it is out now. Okay, yeah. Street Fighter's out. So I've played like the, a good amount of Street Fighter. Zelda's out. Um, and then Diablo's also out. Diablo just came out. That's it. I was just gonna look at my phone, look at look at your top your top eight list, and like yeah. remind myself what was the other one. It's Diablo. That's sixteen the other one. is right around the corner. So I think I have enough time between now <laughs> and Final Fantasy sixteen coming out to beat Crisis Core Reunion. Which would be an excellent spend of my time, considering now we know early 2024 we are getting seven rebirth. And at the end of this month, like we get 16 out. Oh yeah, That's, dude. And the and demo like, has to I'm come fine. out sometime between now and then. So I'm going to be playing that game probably within the next seven days. In some capacity. So cool. I'm surprised we didn't get the demo out of Summer Games Fest today because it started showing up on the PSN back end. And I'm like, all right. I learned to set my expectations because Final Fantasy VII Remake, its demo showed up on the PSN back end like three months before it came out. But I also know there is less than a month until there's like. A week and a half. What's yeah. today's date? The 8th. The 8th. Two weeks exactly to the day till 16 comes out. So, yeah. and we know, you know there's I'm, a demo. I, I am going to say this, though. I am surprised you don't have, like, a calendar inside your room. I do. That's data. what I was looking up at. That's why I was like, what's today's date? Oh, it's, oh you look at the calendar. You don't have, like, a, a, a countdown calendar inside your that's what you need, man. <laughs> yeah, I did. Just a, a ticker timer. <laughs> I got a little. This is a complete <laughs> off the rails. It's... There we go. If he if he asks one, you gotta set it up, man. You gotta set up until the whole. <laughs> it's a nice. it's a mirror that looks like a phone. That's a clock. Shout out! I'm just gonna reflect this sound paneling in my camera. Uh, nice. But it's a clock. It's a digital clock. So I could. And I mean, it connects. It? it has USB and stuff. So if there's a way and to hack the... this to be a countdown timer, is it midnight? Like midnight is the release time? Midnight Eastern? Oh, I'm definitely so. The sad part is, uh... you get a physical copy, aren't you? Oh no! What? I have a digital system. No, digital okay, deluxe edition's been pre-ordered but for months. Like you, you say it like that, but I have seen you in the past, like like get get physical copies to you know games you already bought digitally. True, but that hasn't happened recently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so make it seem like I'm an outlier. Like you just making stuff up. Well, you I get, mean, you get no physical sometimes. 
I yeah, I mean I have a huge shelf of physical, but uh even like Tears of the Kingdom I still only have physically and like no PS I don't have a single physical PS5 disc or game. Really? Not one. Not one. Cuz I have no huh. use for them. It's just like yeah. literally spending money on a box. And if I'm going to spend money on a box, it's going to be a steel book and it's going to go on that shelf. So I've straight up just bought steel books for games that like Elden Ring. I did buy a steel book. It had no game in it, but cuz I got Elden Ring digitally and played it digitally on my system. That's interesting. That's like that's like the equivalent of uh golden age comics because like they're just going to destroy those copies that aren't being used and people who actually bought physical copies for the ps5 could be that's that's well i mean they're still being mass produced because the more common skew of the ps5 is the disc version and there are still these rumors of the modular ps5 with a detachable disc drive so there still might be the potential of me like 30 some years though like like the physical copy that could be something oh yeah no i mean i for the most part have gone almost entirely digital with my media i don't know if that episode's out yet but i went through my blu-ray shelf and my xbox one was my blu-ray player and my xbox one died due to neglect i'm sorry i take good care of my systems it was just in the room but it just at some point died and it, it's, like, hilariously dead. Like, you hit the button, and it, it has, like, the do-do-do-do, like, turning on sound. And then it just goes do-do-do-do, and does the oh, turn. Oh, my PS3 was like that, dude, but it was a red ring of death, so. Yeah. It's a whole I just got to hit up Microsoft game. and just be like, hey. Because, I mean, I think I've gotten a 360 that I got used fixed, and I bought this Xbox One new, and it's not, like... It's legitimately just sat on a dresser next to a TV for years. But no red ring of death? I mean, the only light that could come out of it is this one white light that is the button. But that like that lights up once during the do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Gotcha. <laughs> that was a terror back in the day for the 360 and the PS3. Like the red ring of yeah. death and red light of death. Like The yellow light. Was it the yellow light in the PS? Yeah. Ooh. That's one of the reasons I don't have one of those PS3s because, I mean, just over time, all of those PS3s are going to have that problem. You no, got to... D- so, like, my first PS3 was the Slim that I still have, and then I got the Super Slim when I started, like, really collecting games because I was like, yeah, I don't need my high school era PS3 trying to, like, <laughs> let me just buy a refurbished Super Slim huge hard drive download a bunch of shit get like i got japanese ps3 games that i can just plop in there and have some fun with i miss those days so much just yeah. getting any random game and just popping in just just having a whole weekend of it man i've missed that so much yeah and i know you have less time than me but like that's we were just talking about 16 coming out and huh. I work the day 16 comes out. I work the day after 16 comes out. And then the following two days, I'll probably, like, play till my eyes bleed. But... <laughs> I'm gonna be candid with you. What's that? The last, the last also, you game, still friend. live on Twitch. I don't want you to... Yeah. <laughs> you it's only, get it's too candid. Do, it's, only, it's only bad to gamers. The last Final Fantasy game I played was 11. So I'm just going to put that out there for everybody. That was the last Final Fantasy game I played. was Final Fantasy XI. And I did play ten two. I did, I did play some nine also. You but, know, uh, nine's getting a remake. I did not know that. Nine, nine is getting an animated show from a French what? studio. What? Squall? No, no way. That's eight. Squall is eight. Okay. Who? Nine is Zidane and okay. Vivi. Why? I mean, apparently, like, six and nine are regarded as, like, the thinking man's favorite Final Fantasies, like... Uh, like, true Final Fantasy, yeah. Yeah, so, and I mean, I know six is great. I just, and I have six installed on my PS5, but this Crisis Core reunion is screaming my name, because Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth is happening, man. <laughs> Within the next year, I will be playing that 
not on two discs, on one downloaded copy to an SSD. But... Ah, I highly recommend everybody just go watch this trailer. Because, I mean, technically speaking, it still looks kind of rough because it's still kind of early. And I know, like, the polishing and the anti-aliasing and, like, that phase of things is usually one of the last things that gets done. So... But, I mean, it still looks just incredible. I'm clicking through these images. And then it's just like... This is not the same story. What were, like, Final Fantasy VII, like, remake started to veer off path and kind of ended it in, like, an ambiguous way. Okay. But, and then Intergrade was just, like, I... It went there for you, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean... I wish I had played Final Fantasy VII Remake when it came out. So, like, all the crazy, like, zeitgeist Charlie Day at the, <laughs> at the like, pin board serial killer thing. Like, <laughs> like uh. to have all of that in the zeitgeist with everyone is something that I'm going to do it with 16. And I wish I had done it with 7 Remake. But I'm going to do it with Rebirth. Like, it's... I'm already on the, like, analyzing trailers and screenshots step of the process. And <sighs> we got less than a year, man. That's all I got to say. Is <laughs> it's, like, probably six months out, honestly. Been, Square, will... Little... Square will release a game on Christmas. They just don't care. This, they will actually. You're not, you're not wrong about that. And right. like it'll it'll make Google Boss and make people forget about all the games that came out previous to it. I've been spending a lot of time with my kids because it's summer break for them, and I'm trying to do this new thing with parenting. It's like spending all my time as I, as I can with them during the summertime and just having that be that. And they've been asking me tons of questions. So I got a question <laughs> for you when it when it comes to this, like comes to this and gaming in general. Like a, being an adult, it's not easy playing games when you want to play games, you got like so many responsibilities and all that. But if you can get immersed in one game right now, like you know, like no no questions asked, no responsibilities needed, what would that game be right right now for you? Like what what would you want to get like immersed in? Like and not have to worry about like the responsibilities afterwards. Honestly, Zelda. Like if really? I could just like check like if I could check out into a pocket dimension and just like spend the time needed to like play and beat and fully experience Zelda. Yeah. Like totally. Because it's just such a massive game and I know this flood's already hurting it. Like the fact that Final Fantasy 7 or Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion right now is probably the game I'm about to be playing and I've been playing Monster Hunter World and then like I have been slacking on rating. I'm probably like two weeks behind on rating in Final Fantasy 14 and yeah Zelda's just such a good game that and it has so much content in it and so much, like, if I could play just, and it, it was just one game, because, like, if I could do a bunch of games, I'd Crisis Core Reunion, I'd 14, I'd Monster Hunter, because, like, I'm not even done with Sunbreak, really, right on the PlayStation version. Like, I've been chipping away. I'm, like, Master Rank 47 for those who know what that means. Like, and, like, there, I think there's content up to Master Rank 100 just in the version that's out. And they... So Monster Hunter also had their last digital event for Rise where they talked uh, about the last monster, uh, Primordial Malzinos. You mentioned that one before. Yeah. Yeah, I, we knew it was going to be a variant of Malzinos, but this is Malzinos before he was corrupted by the Kirio, and so okay. this is like ancient Malzinos. And apparently he has a beef with Gasmagorm, which kind of makes sense. It's all... I just said, Gasmagorm <laughs> sounds like I'm just making shit up, but I promise I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that, because it, it did... You saw the look on my face this like, was not. <laughs> Yeah, 
No, I get you, man. I get you. <laughs> so you said it confidently too, like with your with your full chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not saying this incorrectly. I'm live right now. <laughs> I know my moth. The the moth. The probably two or three people out there that I've convinced to play Monster Hunter. <laughs> Or Final Fantasy fourteen just they for know. my time podcasting. <laughs> they are on the exact same page. They're like, yeah, totally. 100%. Preach, Anton. Preach it up. <laughs> When's that Velcana drop coming? Like, we waiting. We're waiting. Late man. August. Waiting. August 25th, by the way, for console, for Xbox and PlayStation. I think those are the ones. Yeah, Xbox One, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series with smart delivery, all that. August 25th is when we are getting the last three title updates. So we're going to get all of the content that is missing from Sunbreak on in the PlayStation version that's been coming out on Switch and PC. All that, we have to wait till the end of August for all that content. So I'm slowly so, chipping away at Monster Hunter. I'm like checking in, doing some happens, event yeah. quests, like progressing, but I mean... The hunts that, like, I want to hunt Amatsu. I want to hunt Velkana. And neither of them will be there till the end of August. Like, I was hoping it'd be a quicker turnaround because it's more so that they're porting. They could just port the PC version to these consoles at this point. It's the same architecture. So I don't get why it's taking. It took Rise so long to come out, it took Sunbreak so long to come out. And now it's taking these last three title updates. I'm just like, they're killing time. Yeah. It sounds like that's exactly like just uh, get that money out. Like if you have like cash in October but or I mean, August. So Capcom, well, it's free updates. That's the thing. Oh, so it is free. So they're just they're just milking it, just waiting for it to come out. Keep keep the relevance going. That's yeah. Really going but on. I mean right. I Part of me thought today we'd get a Monster Hunter World 2 trailer out of Summer Game Fest, and that's still a possibility of one of the things that could happen, and that's super exciting for me. Because when they ended Iceborne, like they had their last live presentation for Iceborne, and they sunset it, it was that same summer, I want to say, that they announced Rise. So potentially we like now that Rise has been sunset and all the sunbreak and all of that content is done. We have to see what the world team's been working on since twenty eighteen <laughs> because You like saying you're saying there's there gotta be more. We we need more. There has to be more. Well, I mean this. they just have a cadence that they've pretty much stuck to and I understand and Capcom has just been on top. It's that they have been on fire of late, yeah. With everything. Like on top of it. How many Resident Evil games is this? They're yeah. like six deep in and these still, new era paid. of good Resident Evil games. And, yeah. Well, hold on. Because it's <clears throat> seven and eight, two and three and four. So they're five games deep in this Resident Evil renaissance. And I mean, Monster yeah. Hunter World was the beginning of the Monster Hunter renaissance. It really like revolutionized like what we saw when it comes to this era of gaming with and, that genre. Yeah, And that was an early PS4 game. And now they have the Capcom ID stuff with Street Fighter VI that has crossplay. Ooh, like, dude. It, it, it got the names in the mouth of everyone now. Like everyone, Everyone's saying Capcom now. So, no, I again, I hear you. Yeah, Street Fighter's out here. Resident Evil's out here. We need a Mega Man. We need... Dragon's oh Dogma God, is out here. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Jeez, I got like, got slept on the rug, but it's still there. Even like the fans of that will remember Capcom. Well, but the, the answer question on my end, like about what game uh, I would get immersed in currently, and I get like how ridiculous it sounds, but it would be that Marvel Snap. And I'm not sure if you've seen like, like the new package they got for this month. I saw they announced a. It's on this. It's, it's Spider Man. Oh, they give, you a, they give you a Wednesday C card. You got a Spider Man 2099 card, Ooh. and you got yourself. Uh, I forget the other character. They got like they got all Spider Man characters. They got Gwen Stacy 2099. Get they got like, a new Miles. Oh, no, no Spider Punk yet. No, no Spider Punk yet. No. But uh, they are. Punk. <laughs> <laughs> and Spider Man India is... between. Those yeah. two characters, yeah. After, especially after watching Across the Spider Verse, 
costumes yeah, are those incredible. two characters. I need costumes them. Costumes are absolutely incredible. I gotta watch this movie. Everyone's talking about it. I heard like uh, one some. I heard some people are hopping on, on some negativity about that movie, but I heard like no, all I all will not movie. stand for like. I, <sighs> I had one of the more negative takes I saw online, but I still like extremely enjoyed the movie. The movie. Right like it was a great movie, but I don't. The first movie was an incredible standalone Spider-Man yep. story. Agreed. The Across the Spider Verse is not that. It requires okay. the context of the first movie, and it's a continuation. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I can respect that. But yeah. Like, but is it good on its own merit? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's all that matters then. That's all that matters. Definitely. Most definitely like the art direction, the soundtrack, like the cameos, like Yeah, Metro Boomin was like the big name of this this soundtrack. Oh not, yeah. Uh, post, and he not knocked post Malone this time. He knocked it out the park, man. I don't know if yeah, you've I heard, listened I heard to it. Yeah. It's good. Hummingbird is just like one of those songs that is stuck in my head. Like the same way uh, Sunflower from the first Sunflower, one. Sunflower. Yeah. Hummingbird is just on repeat in my head at all times. Dude, yeah. I got to take my kids to see this movie. I just did a podcast with my children, all of you guys haven't watched it. But uh, yeah, I'd, we talk about a lot of different stuff. I interview my, my, my daughter Willow and my other two kids, Desdemona and Jonathan, are a part of it also, so make sure you guys check it out. I'm not going to, like, highly promote this thing or, like, send out, like, post for because it's my kids, but uh, I've done, like, two other interviews with my other two kids, and, like, this is my, my other kid. I just had a conversation with her about, about what she's into. She wants to be a social media uh, personality. Who, who would have thunk? Never, never would have got that. Funny thing is my son does, too. That's exactly what they both want to do, and... My wife is not too happy about that, but you know, it's what it, what it is. You know, they're they're happy. Kids. Yeah, I mean, I didn't set out to be an amateur content creator, pro- professional amateur content creator, mm-hmm. but you know, it's what it is, man. It's what it is. Like they they got a dream. I'm gonna help them fulfill it. All that matters. But to... like, but definitely definitely Marvel Snap is the game to go for for me. Like, uh, it's, it, it's, it, I want to get past forty. Like the the ranking they give you every 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 month. Yeah. I keep like I get like, in a wall at forty, then like I get backed all the way up like the twenty nine. Like I I got wanna these players are getting better, their decks are getting better, and I wanna get myself immersed in these decks. I love deck building. Well let me I gotta find I was scrolling through this. Uh there was Marvel Snap News at Summer Game Fest. Those are bad news. Good news. New modes. Right. Marvel Snap is getting a new competitive mode. Marvel Snap will soon un- introduce Conquest mode, a new competitive mode coming to the card battler on June 13th. The mode will Sorry. add a single elimination tournament to the game, with the tournament taking place over the course of each season. That's why they asked for the terms and agreement to be updated. That's why. They, did, they just sent that out today, the terms and the uh, services agreement update they just yeah. said that up for everyone like you like they said you can't keep playing unless you agree to this so they're definitely changing those things around there for sure major things i'm here for it because these new cards are awesome the high evolutionary can't fucking stand that deck cannot stand a high evolutionary deck don't like it don't like it man i haven't ooh, ooh. booted up marvel snap in so long like i'm my... telling you when you when you get on you play the high evolutionary like you will be Fully angered. I'm that deck. wondering where like did match make me because I can't really be going against people with like a higher level than you. <laughs> <laughs> they owned you. They would. They will own the hell out of you, man. <laughs> so I'm wondering if like this new update will be enough to bring in new people. So like I have people because I could probably look at my deck right now and not be able to tell you what my strategy with it was. <laughs> And like honestly, the new updates make that paramount. Like the, these new guys, they're straight not, not the guys who have these awesome decks are destroying everyone. Like even like even the decks that I got, I, I go like the different sources, outsource my decks and make them awesome. These dudes, they are destroying me with these awesome new decks, man. Like hardcore, and like there's nothing I can do about. It. I, I keep trying to acquire cards, and they buy the new cards, and they still keep on destroying me. So it's. Kitty Pride. You see Kitty Pride in the deck, just retreat. 
That's all I'm saying to you. I'm I'm dead serious. She's a she costs one to come out, but every time she leaves and comes back, she gains two. So like just imagine it's just throwing her out every single turn. And like you can use Killmonger, but if you kill throw kill Killmonger out, like you know, after she's before she's out there, it's pointless. So yeah. And these guys can wait. They got patience like a it's a fun <laughs> game. I love I love strategy games. I love strategy games. Like when I have my Xbox and my PlayStation, Magic the Gathering was my number one game. You I saw. mean, Hearthstone, man. I don't know, like, if it's too late to get into Hearthstone, but I say check out Hearthstone because the people who made Hearthstone went on to make Marvel Snap. So, like, if you want to kind of see where some of this DNA came from, Hearthstone, it's right there. Is it worth it? Is it worth it though? Is it it's worth free. like booting up? Okay. I mean. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of hard to beat that. I also play Vampire Survivor, just so you know. Finally played that. I get, I get the addiction. I get, I get the addiction. I uh, it's like Castlevania and something different that came from my fucking finger on. But like it's, it's definitely something different. And I, <laughs> I want to do better at it. And like it makes me want to do better, right? You know what I mean? Don't you? <laughs> I remember like the first DLC came out, and I didn't get super deep into that. But then the second DLC came out, and I played a lot of the first DLC. But like my Steam Deck's been gathering dust, and I need to, <laughs> I need to find things to do on it. Because I mean, want to do that, man. Yeah. Hmm. Control Rod would be a fun place to take that thing. Yeah, but then I like the problem when I used to take my Switch is like I'm then like isolating myself from like the general everything going on by playing. See, I, that. I get that. But you know, like, like you know those those dead moments you're walking around like you get bored and us do. Switch time, you know, I mean, or Steam Deck time. It's like it's like your phone. It's like you know, popped up a good app. Like I do a more like when I was hanging out with you uh, a while back. I think I took out my my phone when we were sitting up there on your birthday. Played like a one game, put it back in my pocket. No one saw. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get yeah. that fixed in, man? I got hey, that game. I told like, I a hundred percent respect <laughs> it. As somebody. So the other day, uh, at the start of June, there were the new PlayStation Stars objectives for the month. And okay. I was like, I could wait till I get home to do this. Or I could boot these games up on my phone through remote play, get the achievements, and just get these like digital collectibles and stuff. Just no backbone, no nothing. Just like all I had to do was boot up. Like two games and did you? Yeah, totally. Uh, good. All right, <laughs> all right. I wasn't sure. I thought you were gonna give me a disappointing story there for a second, but it sounded like you were hyping me up. Okay, good, because you know, might as well. <clears throat> Dude, I do that sometimes too with uh, with the app based games. As, as most of you know, I play Merge Mansion. I know. Throw me your tomatoes. I got it. And you know, of course, Marvel Snap. And but they give you like you know, like a basket, like a little gift just for booting in. And I do it every single time. Like it's another day, another box. It's free. I don't care. So I take it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that was the thing that was keeping me. It was like the challenges and kind of having the same reward structure that Fortnite yeah. had. That kind of Fortnite has, where it's like keep checking in. We're gonna keep giving you content. But luckily, so we got the. There had been leaks happening, but we actually got the Fortnite. Chapter 4 Season 3 trailer, and the season's called Wilds, and I'm so glad that I don't have to care. Like, I can play Final Fantasy four uh, 16. Like, I can... This is one of those seasons that I'm, like, Optimus Prime might just, like, be one of the most meta skins, and it's just, like does all these cool things but yeah optimus prime i'm not playing this season Ooh, it's too much people, going on the people at fortnite are gonna be mad about this the square enix just took all their money oh, my yeah. goodness oh, 100. well i mean <laughs> at least the money i would have spent uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're not an outlier my friend for sure there's a lot of folks who also play fortnite and are very excited about final fantasy not giving their money to fortnite right now 
it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be a time for sure. <laughs> like, because that was one of the things I was wondering, like, depending on what this new season of Fortnite was, like, like la- the last couple seasons I've been really deep in and, like, completed my battle pass and did all the extra stuff, like, right. have been really deep in, but. I mean, I'll have the battle pass for this season because I'm going to keep my Fortnite crew up. That was one of the things when I stopped playing for a little bit last time. The fact that I didn't keep that up, I missed out on some pretty cool stuff. So I'll just keep that up. That's guaranteed V-Bucks and skins just showing up. <laughs> did you did you hear about the person who got to level 100 on Diablo? <laughs> yeah, on a hardcore playthrough, like completed it what? and then got disconnected because of a blizzard and air. What? What does that say about the game, dude? I mean, it's an online games as a service. There are going to be seasons. There's a battle pass. There's all this stuff. Like it's to be expected. Like in three days, dude. Come I on, mean, that's. I... I remember in Destiny, sometimes we would be raiding and we would desync because we were like in an instanced area for so long trying things over and over and over and over again to finally get it right that like we would, to get back into the other parts of the game, we would have to log off because our session desynced from the server. So, I mean... Diablo 3 launched as, like, way worse than this. Like, I don't... I mean, it seems like it has great... It has a lot of content and that it's really good. It's just, I don't have the time. Like, when I played Diablo 3, it was a simpler time. Yeah. This one one is online, too, right? This Diablo 4, this is a multiplayer online game now? Yeah. I mean, it's been multiplayer online... It definitely had it for... Yeah, it definitely had it for 3. I guess it's not on the Switch. All right, there you go. Wait. That's where I play it. I play it on the Switch. Yeah, but it didn't... Did you not have Nintendo Switch online? Because I feel like that was the thing you could do. Maybe I'm tripping, because I played the PS4 version, and the Switch, like, would probably be at parity with with at least that version of the game. Hmm. Maybe I didn't look at it deep as I probably could, because uh, that could open up a whole new experience of gaming for me if I can play that damn thing online. Just putting that out there. Yeah, I mean... That's the beauty of Diablo, is to play with multiplayer. And, like, me playing by myself the entire time kind of sucks. So, maybe I should, like, look look a little bit deeper into that. Yeah, I feel... Like, I know I definitely did couch co-op with it, but I feel... No, I definitely for sure have played Diablo 3 online with other people. Now that I think about it. I've definitely done that. It wasn't in the initial pop of playing Destiny, but... Not Destiny, Diablo... Uh, but it was like post Overwatch one, and like, what's the other Blizzard game that I can play right now? It's Diablo, and yeah, hopped on Diablo and played multiplayer pe- with people. Shows what I know. Well, I'll I'll check again in the next episode. Hopefully, that and I have Diablo win. three on Switch. <laughs> Will I be able to carve out time to do that of all the no, myriad of things? No. You know, I'd give it a shot for you, D. If you hit me up and I'm at the house, I'll pop Diablo 3 into my Switch. Hope I have enough space to install it. <laughs> Hope these download, these updates don't take three years. And, but, you know, my Switch is hardwired again, which I didn't Dude, realize it wasn't hardwired into my internet. For, like, a, the cable just came unplugged. and was, I was like, what did this ethernet cable go to? And, like, it goes back to the box, like, my Ethernet splitter box. But, yeah, it was my Switch. Just out here wi fi it up for All right. who knows how long. <laughs> but I plugged uh, it back you, up. You, so You can have me hop it onto my Switch and go back to my, my old character. See if, see if they're also there. Or if my kids delete them or not. My daughter probably. See, that's why you got to get the Nintendo Switch online because you'd have cloud backup and you just back your Diablo (laughs) characters up to the cloud. And as long as you have the subscription there, that's why I can't lose PlayStation Plus because all of my save, all of my save data since 2013 is in the PlayStation cloud and I can't risk it. I can't like, I know a lot of these things are server side. So like, 
my Final Fantasy fourteen character. Like I could just like on an entirely different PlayStation or an entirely different system, like it's on PC, whatever, like my character will be there, but my Monster Hunter character is stored locally. And I really should look at the hour count I have, even just on Sunbreak and Rise on PlayStation, because that that was a 2023 game. That was April. No, Sunbreak was April. Was Rise January? Was that of this year? Your concept of time is all off, man. Because Game of the Year is about to be really hard if Monster Hunter Rise came to PlayStation this year. Why does this keep happening? See? <laughs> for the fun, hey, we, we have very low expectations for gaming this year. Then, then all this stuff. Oh, happened. no. I and knew. Spider Man still hasn't came out yet. Oh, yeah. So, well, while we're talking about Summer Game Fest, and somehow we've been <clears> going <throat> for 40 minutes and have talked about, yeah. like. Only four, one thing about Summer Fest, yeah. Well, no, we talked about Marvel Snap, and we talked about Fortnite. Is that part of, is yeah, that part of Summer Fest, too? Is it? Oh, yeah, that was happens. part of the Summer Games Fest. I had no idea. Of it. Yeah, I don't that way. <laughs> that I, I'm legit reading these things <laughs> off the this breakdown IGN page has just been up. So I'm just I'm just like you know half a sensibly fucking like just <laughs> just bypass it to it right on. Right. I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the ether, man. All right. Look at me. I made it back into the gaming world. <laughs> so Spider-Man 2 launches October 20th. We got a new trailer. The, yeah. They announced. You know, they did a bunch of word news about that, like 10 minutes long for that trailer. Like, that was well, no, this, show. that was the PlayStation showcase at the right. Summer Game Fest show today. There was a new trailer, and they actually no gave way. the release date, and they talked about apparently Venom isn't Eddie Brock in this, and I thought it was going to be Harry Osborne, and apparently it's apparently it's somebody that fans are not expecting to be Venom is going to become Venom. Oh, it's not even Flash Thompson. No way. So, there's been more than one Venom throughout the, the history, but like even the canon- canonical. Like lore, but if it's not Flash Thompson or Eddie Brock inside of this, but if it is Flash Thompson, you're gonna have guns, like a lot of guns in this. Well, I mean, Flash there were Thompson. guns like you use your Spidey senses, and you could like, <clears throat> but there people shot RPGs at you. <laughs> in but think about think about like a Venom with a gun shooting into a Spider Man. I mean, I can see like, it. That's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, and the Kraven's in it too, along with the lizard. They just added so much cool stuff to this game, dude. And Miles is in it, too? <laughs> yeah. They're both Jeez. featured on the box art. Let me see if I can send you this image. And, That's I mean, nice. you can look through the Insomniac post because they showed, uh, like, the pre-order bonuses. And, I mean, yeah. This is probably the next this, big game. I got to watch trailer after, after we have this conversation, for sure. Like, that, that sounds awesome. So, yeah, I just dropped. Wicked! <laughs> look at that look at that picture dude october october 20th is the date yeah look at that image man I mean, he's like he's shooting out the black web. oh my goodness yes that's some that's some comic nerd shit right there dude i mean this, this game how- is some comic nerd shit but i am yeah. all on board like this is gonna change how the comic books are going to first most definitely it's gonna change how the comic books are i can guarantee it this is awesome are they cool done with like their multiversal stuff in the comics, or are they leaning mm. more into it? Because I know Spider Geddon was like a thing that happened a while ago. Kamala Khan just died in like the the Spider Man comic, I believe, and uh, I think that she's supposed to be coming back as a mutant pretty soon. Spoiler alert for those of you who's not paying attention. And uh, Peter is still there. But I don't know, like, his whole thing is, like, that it's not working out. Like, life isn't working out for him again, you know? And okay. Miles is Miles is slowly getting his thing back in order after his clone saga, I believe, is what's happening with him right now. Right, yeah. I think but, yeah. his mom died. I mean, yeah. spoilers for these comics. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm not reading the comics, so. Yeah, I think, like, his mom died in the comic books also. And, like, she was, like, the last linchpin. They wanted to give him, like, that little bit of tragedy. You know what I mean? He's a, I mean, his dad died, though. 
that's like part of his arc. Like it's like Uncle Ben is like, no, nah, Miles is dad. Funny thing about Miles, Miles is also a multiverse character. So because he Very was shifted true. from the Ultimate Universe, and now he's in the six one six, and that only happened because of the death of the Ultimate Universe. Comic book nerd here, but yeah. Hey, Ultimate Universe died, but Miles got See, I need you to world. have the context of Across the Spider-Verse <laughs> to have. We got to just have a spider talk. We got okay? to watch that movie and talk about it. It's like we did with The Last of Us. For most definitely, man. Got to do it. Huh. I can't wait for that to come out on digital so I can watch it with the pause button. That's all I need. Like, Because it and happens like so fast. Yeah. <laughs> like when I can... Because I know they didn't use, like, motion blur. They didn't use a lot of the 3D CG tricks that they could have used. So, there is no such thing as a blurry frame to pause Spider-Verse on. And so, I just wanted some of those chase sequences. Just see how crisp it is, yeah. Well, just see some of the references that there were things happening. And I'm, like, over... Oh, there were Easter eggs, is what you're saying. Lots, lots of Easter oh, eggs. Oh, yeah, and all like... totally. Really? Yeah, the first one had a lot of Easter eggs. They got, like, comic nerds working there, Damon. They got to. Like, or at least the people who read the comics, anyway. Oh, that's wicked. Well, I haven't read the comics, but I, even... S- the suit from Spider-Man PS4 was in the first Across the Spider-Verse. <laughs> like, when, he, when cool. they went in this shed and they went down <laughs> into the basement... One of the suits was the PlayStation suit. That's cool. Right on. Those are cool Easter eggs. Right? That's what I'm talking about, man. So, like, the first one, it was, like, had a lot of stuff like that. This, we got to get off it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a segue. Next topic. Next topic. So, Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name, which is just the most Japanese title for a video game I've ever right? heard. Right, you got my right. attention with that. Um, well, the, so Yakuza, that series, became Like a Dragon, because Ryuga Gotugu, I always mess up the studio name. I know I Ryuga, but then the second part, but that literally translates to Like a Dragon. So Yakuza 7 was Yakuza Like a Dragon, and now we had Like a Dragon Ishin, which was Yakuza Ishin when it finally got ported and, like, upgraded engine. And then now this is the first new story since the new naming convention. So Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, is about Kiryu, the guy who was the main character of Yakuza 1 through 6, so he supposedly faked his death to protect his family, and now like he's being forced to like return to his life. So, yeah, it got a release date, November ninth. It's a spinoff of the Like a Dragon series, and we know a- already that Like a Dragon eight is going to have Ichiban and Kazuya. So, not Kazuya, Kiryu. Kiryu is, so he was one through six, and then seven was about Ichiban, and then this next game's going to be about both of them. Well, not the next one, because the next one's going to be about Kiryu, which is the Gaiden. Is he in the cover for this thing? For which one? For this game. Like the, the, the orangey-yellow cover they got for this? No, let me see. Because cool. I know that was like the color scheme for Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is interesting. I wonder how this is going to do. Yakuza has a big name attached to it. Like, and this coming out probably like a week and a half after Spider Man. I wonder how this is going to do. The art I'm seeing, you might be looking at the Yakuza Like a Dragon. I am looking at Yakuza Like a Dragon. Not the guide in the man who erased his name art. Because that's like black and white and gray. It has, like, Kiryu walking. I'll <laughs> send you the Like a Dragon Gaiden. And that's what makes it really confusing, because these are all technically Yakuza games, but now they're called Like a Dragon games, but there's literally a game that's Yakuza Like a Dragon that I have on PlayStation. So, 
Okay, this is what I'm seeing on the news article, but what I'm seeing when I hit it up is showing me something entirely different. Right, but I got gotcha. you. I got. Gotcha. But yeah, that what you're looking at is technically Yakuza Seven. That guy who looks like Eric Andre is Ichiban Kasuga, and his life is a JRPG. <laughs> and like, <laughs> so uh, there was an April Fool's Day joke where Yakuza said we're going to turn-based combat, like Persona. And they showed, like, this battle menu around Yakuza characters. And turns out that wasn't an April Fool's Day joke. That was what, like, Yakuza Like a Dragon is just Yakuza Persona 5. Nice. It looks smooth. The reason, part of the reason that this one was called Like a Dragon is it was like a dragon quest. <clears throat> ha. <laughs> Japanese, man. I'm still fucking jokesters. <laughs> I think cool. this is one that you'd get several laughs out of watching. I don't know if MK Ice and Fire did a Yakuza Like a Dragon playthrough, but I think I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> I think this That's is one hilarious. like just because what I've played of it, because I got it with one of those early like next gen games. So I have Yakuza Like a Dragon probably installed right now, honestly, because it's one of those just. I played probably the first five hours, let's say. And just just in that time, so much happened and it was so crazy and all of it was so amazing on just, yeah. It's showing me the list of all the games that came out four hours ago too. Was it, was this baby steps was a wizard with a gun remnant Two, final fantasy rebirth. I'm getting like all of that double dragon. I forgot about double dragon. That's right. Do you know about Sandland? Sandland? Mm-mm. It's a, apparently obscure Akira Toriyama manga from 2000 called Sandland. And it's getting a new action game with art from Akira Toriyama and gameplay from Bandai Namco. So, like, our next Dragon Ball... Well, I'm not even sure if that's the next Dragon Ball game. I don't know if that Dead by Daylight Dragon Ball game came out. And I also know we're still waiting on the next gen port of Dragon Ball Fighters. But at some point, the next Akira Toriyama game we're getting from Bandai Namco is going to be yep. Sandland. I, I never, I, I never seen about, fans get get so excited for something than like than seeing a fan of Akira Toriyama gaming fans. Those fans are diehard. Those mm. are the most diehard fans of the gaming fans. Chrono Trigger, dude, like they go nuts for that. Every Chrono like Trigger, you can't even talk about Dragon Quest. Yeah. Dragon Quest, like, okay. influence, like, people think, I don't even know, because I don't live in Japan, but I feel like <laughs> in Japan, like, I know in North America, Dragon Ball Z definitely has more cultural cachet sure. than Dragon yeah. Quest, but in Japan, Dragon Quest is Dragon Quest, like, Dragon Quest is one of those end-all, be-all games, it is top tier, so... That's what I'm thinking is like a Toriyama art for that. Mm-hmm. That had to have just been like, I'm sure Not people like so even me who like growing up, I just wasn't like in the same spheres as Dragon Ball Z. So like Dragon Ball Z kind of missed me. And, but I mean, like I appreciate the games. I've watched some of the modern movies. Like I enjoy oh, Dragon Ball for what it is. I just definitely can't go watch it. I got properties like that that I feel the same way about, so I get you. Like, I respect you in your modern incarnation. Dragon Ball Super looks dope. Like, but there are people like, no, you got to go back and start at Dragon Ball Volume 1, Chapter 1, and then read all of that. Read all of Dragon Ball (laughs) Z. Read... Skip Grand Tour. That's the one thing everybody's like, don't, no, 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 no GT. It's not bad. Yeah, no, GT. But GT's like decent, though. No, I don't don't get crucified on the internet, D. I can't let you. I know, right? I know. (laughs) They they hate it when people say that. One of my hot takes, one of my comedic hot takes for a while was that uh, Dragon Ball GT was the best iteration of Dragon Ball. And like (laughs) just the people who knew me knew I was just like shit posting at that point. Because they're like, this dude didn't even watch Dragon Ball. And you're right, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, if you think of shit like that. Yeah, it's you super. Know, you know what you're talking about. Super never, is a cash grab of just, like, all of your fanfics, they're canon. Nostalgia. 
Yeah, it's nostalgia. That's all it is. That's all. That's all. Super is like that. I will say wholeheartedly. Super, super, just a nostalgia base. Yeah, but like, I mean, uh, so the all a lot of the stuff that I've seen has been super stuff, and that yeah. stuff's cool. I'm not even going to like. I'm not going to say it looks bad, and the story for Super was really fun, but it was definitely a nostalgia train. Like that's what Super was. It was like, I mean, it's still going on. Back. I don't know. <laughs> The manga is ongoing. Yeah, it is going slowly. Like, I want to say it's like a monthly release, but Dragon Ball Super is ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. It is. So, yeah, Sandland is a Bandai Namco action RPG. All right. Pal World. First of all, I know you didn't get to watch these trailers, and when you do get a chance to watch these, you watch Pal World? We'll watch Sandland. Oh. Well, Pal World. They're going to get sued. This game's never going to come out. I'm like, yo, there's a level of copying Pokemon that Temtem does. And, like, some of these other games where it's like, we're not going to cross certain lines. There are Pokemon. Like, so, Pal World. Are you watching it? I need the twist I to am. hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's exactly what this is what with guns all right <laughs> yep there we go that was what okay. i was ready hey i didn't like, want he's to... just he's just holding it like or she <laughs> they're just blasting away dude what the hell using forced labor pokemon what what is going on here dude they're powering the city first of all some of these are straight up it is like pokemon rip that's a Gyarados. That's a Lilligant. Like you are guys, you guys are going to get sued. Like that's oh. a Raichu. That's definitely a Mew. Like a char. A fire there was Mew. a Salamence. I was like, yeah. Pokemon Company is not going to take kindly to this existing. <laughs> I remember. I remember when I first heard Olivia Rodrigo's uh, music. Like, is this is this Taylor Swift? No, it's Olivia Rodrigo. Why does she sound like Taylor Swift? No more than two weeks after I said that she was being sued by Taylor Swift and Halsey for her stealing their 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 look, and you are calling this Pokemon definitely going to see these guys for most definitely. Like, is, that, is that Mario too? They got some Mario aspects in this also. What the hell are they doing in Power World? I have no idea, <laughs> but a, allegedly it's coming to early access next January, and you best believe it's going on the Steam Deck. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be buying this game, dude. Everybody. Uh that's all. It looks good though. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like a fun game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't look half bad. It's just like, how is this legal? <laughs> right. Uh it actually looks pretty. Looks pretty decent. Not gonna lie, dude. It looks pretty decent. <laughs> right. It looks like I might like, get down with it, but like, <laughs> you guys are getting sued for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> sucks to suck, but doesn't look like a game sucks. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. All right. Uh. So, so, I'm looking. Twisted Metal got a trailer. We finally got a look at Twisted Metal. It's coming to Peacock July 27th. And I know you, a Trekkie, I'm have Peacock. So, you're going to have yeah. to be my coverage on it. So, so, let's get some things clear. First off, Paramount <laughs> Plus is where Trek is, first and foremost. Okay. Peacock has Bel, Peacock has Bel- Air. But, like, I will be watching this. My wife has Peacock. She watches the Bravo shows, so I definitely will be watching this. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to have yeah. to let me know how Anthony Mackie in Twisted Metal turns out. Because... The only reason why I want to watch this is because of that motherfucker right there. That's the only reason why I want to watch this show. Is Not because it's a PlayStation like, TV show on the tier of the HBO's The Last of Us critically acclaimed. Don't, don't, try, don't, try, don't, try, don't try to sell this. It's coming don't from the dare. same like production <laughs> pipeline. Like, Don't you dare try to sell me on this. I don't think that's not going to happen. I, don't, I just don't see it. No. I, I watched that, that first preview that they had. Looks abysmal. Like, uh, like I, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to watch it, so I didn't. So I couldn't have to say anything about it, but uh, all right, I'm watching the new trailer. It looks pretty. I haven't watched wow. the trailer yet, and I can't watch the trailers no. with the stream going because they're going to try and play through my headphones, and then the audio is <laughs> just going to blow out the stream and ruin everything. I so, get you. Can't... What, I got to mute mine for the same reason. I hear you. It, it looks crisp, though. It looks crisp. Like, uh, 
I'm watching the trailer and like, and they're not in the car. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. It's just, oh, it's a clip. Yeah. So why do I, why do I care about a fight scene outside the car? The whole point of the game was him to be in the car. And now Mackie has like, like, you know, like he's about to get pinned down at the casino by Sweet Tooth. I can almost assume they're making a gay joke right now. Uh, jeez. I don't think they'd be that out of touch. <laughs> During no. Pride Month, like, <laughs> and I mean, point. it was on Summer Game Fest. No, I don't think I. I'm pretty sure right. I haven't seen the trailer, but I'm pretty sure yeah. that they weren't making a gay joke. <laughs> it, uh, I'm watching it with no audible, so it's it's all it's full mute. Maybe they didn't, you know, but it looks like it's just waiting there, hand and fist, for it to happen. But yeah, you're right. Pride Month, they're not gonna do that. That'd be ridiculous. All right, so. Speaking of ridiculous, Exo Primo is getting a Street Fighter 6 crossover where you have Ryu and Guile as mechs. I don't know if you've seen Exo Primo. It's kind of like modern Lost Planet Dino Crisis. Um, it's really ridiculous. Like, I played one of the betas for it, and it just rains dinosaurs in that game, which is crazy. And so they added, like... Wait a second. They show this is like the they're... one where you're watching a woman the entire time, and like she's like leading you like down like this corridor or whatnot, and like you gotta like fight these dinosaurs or work with dinosaurs or something like that. Is yeah, that, was that the game they're talking about? Okay, I saw this this trailer. It was uh, it was in the the, the the game awards last year, wasn't it? Probably, possibly, because okay. the game the game awards and summer game fest are two sides of the same coin. Right. So, like, it's hosted yeah, yeah. by the same person. Like, it's run by the same... It's So, this is, like, the follow-up to the Game Awards. The summer version. Gotcha. So, I, that's why... The, I have seen this part. Yeah, the butt. The robot butt. That's right. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, Right. So, just Ryu is one of... You see the different, like, classes of mechs? One of them is just straight-up yeah. Ryu. One of them is just straight-up Guile. <laughs> what? <laughs> And then Street Fighter Six announced that they're getting their first collaboration soon. It's from Capcom. I'll do it. Well, yeah. I'll I mean, it. I'm hoping it's Monster Hunter because the Monster Hunter content in Street Fighter V <clears throat> was some of the best content in Street Fighter V. Is that what you think? It's kind of like, like a Monster Hunter kind of feel to it? What? Exo Primal or Street Fighter? Yeah, Exo Primal. Oh no, Exo Primal has a Lost Planet feel to it. Okay. Which was kind of Monster Hunter with guns, but then it like kind of sci-fi like it was it was definitely a Capcom game of that era, but it you know, Dragon's Dogma still has its has its fans, Lost Planet still has its fans. Like, I'd like to play a PS5 remaster of Lost Planet 2. Like, I'd honestly take that in a heartbeat. So, depending on Exo Primal, I know it's launching on Xbox Game Pass. Depending on how long it takes to hit PlayStation Plus on some tier, I don't know. Might Did give you it a see go. these? These, uh... The Max? These, yes. These Exo I, Primals? Yeah, I watched it. I told you, it's just the Ryu is a mech. I don't know how else I could have said it to get like the extra. I, I thought you were just. I thought you were just shitting me. To be honest, with you. <laughs> no. Like, like, like I thought you were talking about your ass. Like, no, it's, it's literally <laughs> Ryu as a mech. I'm reporting the news here, D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dropping the ball. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. And there's Guile. <laughs> no way. I literally thought you were you bullshit. No, me. I really did. It looks. It looks exactly <laughs> like them. That's wicked. That's wicked. Wow. They're really like handing out that IP to everybody, aren't they? Well, I mean, it's all Capcom. <laughs> Exo Primal's Capcom, Street Fighter's Capcom. Do it as you will, yeah. I but I mean, it. to be fair, there was Monster Hunter content in Sonic Frontiers and Sonic content in Monster <laughs> Sonic and Sega in Capcom. They're not it, even it, cool it's like all that. for everybody, man. Have fun, baby. Like, yeah. everyone can have a little Rapala, piece of it. <laughs> I remember there were tier lists coming out around the time Smash Bros. came out. Of like who yeah. had fought Rathalos and who hadn't fought Rathalos, because Rathalos is Rathalos is in Final Fantasy fourteen. Rathalos is in Metal Gear Solid uh, Peace Walker. <laughs> right, like he's a Sean, he's a Sean Bean of video games. It sounds like <laughs> motherfucking everywhere. 
or Sam Jackson in video games. That motherfucker's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> You remember Sam awesome. Jackson being part of the MCU? He was in that too. <laughs> he was in that. <laughs> coming back, coming back to Secret Invasion. Oh, I know yeah. you're watching that. Oh yeah, definitely. I know you're watching that. Is it out? Yeah. If it's uh, out, I'm not watching it yet. yet. But when it comes out, I'll definitely watch it. <laughs> There's so much on the plate to be watching stuff right now, dude. I hear you. Like, uh, I, I don't watch as much TV as I do, but when I do watch TV, I get fully immersed. I get full. Like, I, I've been on this new thing. Maybe because I like I'm a I'm an exennial, but like watching shows that uh, come out the day of has been my new thing again. Like, don't ask me why it is, but it is. Like, what, I've been week watching to that week drop releases. Yeah. yeah, isn't that weird? Like, I'm well, like, like I mean, I'm, I'm done. I'm done binging. As a seasonal, I've never been a binger, and so for me, seasonal anime is like every week, like Mandalorian, yep. like all these Velma, mm-hmm. like Last of Us, all these shows that I just. Every single week, it's just like, okay, watch this drop, Ted Lasso, like all these different shows. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I used I used to be a binger. I used to like, like to wait for him to finish up, cannot, watch them all in a hurry, go to the next thing. I cannot do that. Like, I, I get tired anymore. after yeah. a couple hours. I'm just like, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to sleep. Or like, if I'm going to be. <laughs> it sounds more important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It comes I... out June 21st. Which one are we talking so, about? Secret Invasion. Okay, so it comes out a week and a half. Cool. Mm-hmm. So a day before Final Fantasy. So the day before you get your Final Fantasy game, you get to watch the first episode of Secret Invasion. So yep. there you go. That's your birthday present to everybody out there. Happy, unhappy birthday. Alice in Wonderland. Merry unbirthday? I don't know. Yeah, merry Alice happy unbirthday to you, to you, to me. That's who. Yeah. <laughs> we all go a little mad sometimes, man. <laughs> so speaking of going mad people <laughs> went love the crazy over Genshin Impact and now the Ooh. new game from Hoyoverse Honkai Star Rail got a PS5 release window it's coming Q4 2023 which I think for them ends March 31st 2024 so sometime between now and March Honkai Star Rails coming to PS5. I'm trying to see if I can find this, find this on here, like in the news area. Honkai Star Gosh, Rail. Just, well, I mean, we uh, didn't get like any like new information about the game itself because the game's been out on mobile and PC, and Jalen's been raving about it since it came out. Okay. And I know that Honkai Impact was the game they made before Genshin Impact. And all the money that they made off of Genshin Impact and continue to make off of Genshin Impact is what helped get this game off the ground. And it just seems I like you know. it's one of those like mobile games just with unlimited budgets. And I can't wait for the Genshin Impact anime because that's coming from UFO Table, who okay. does the Demon Slayer anime. And so yeah. that level of animation, I need it. It's funny. My kid, my six year old, he was asking me about that game, Gishin Impact. He wanted to he wanted to download it. Did you let him? <clears throat> Not yet. Okay. I, gotta, I gotta check it out. I gotta check it out myself. I gotta like look at it first. It's but he, Breath he of the really Wild with it. anime waifus and husbandos. See what I mean? So like, you know, <laughs> I'm not really about that life. So <laughs> especially not with my kids. No. Uh, I don't no. think it's too I mean, you'll have too... to look at it and be, but I don't think there are Fire Emblem Heroes is way more of a waifu and has Bondo and swimsuit costumes. Like, there are way worse gotcha games. And then there's the added element that it's a gotcha game, so. Oh. Uh, like, I, don't, I don't let my kids watch certain, like, like uh, adult anime, so. Well, ooh, something like that. What, let's see what Genshin Impact is rated by the ESRB. Ha <laughs> Sure. I, I actually trust their judgment or rating as opposed to like, like the actual MPAA. So, yeah. All right. Genshin oh. Impact. ESRB. T for Teen. Okay. They can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they got to wait a little bit. I was like, oh. I could have seen this game being E10. But the reason really? this rated teen is alcohol reference and fantasy violence. Mm, yeah. You play the Diablo series, so that's not really a big deal. Right, I. It's not like. 
and Diablo 3 is tame in my eyes. Yeah, but that's kind of in a different direction. <laughs> there's a difference between, like, yeah, there's levels to this stuff. I probably, I wouldn't let your kid play <laughs> uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. Like, Fire Emblem is Nintendo, it's, you know, but it's, it it goes places. Does it? Yeah, it, it it wants your money for those JPEGs, and it's going to get it. Oh, that's what you're getting at. <laughs> they're they're a little capitalist anyway, so it doesn't even really matter. Sometimes we have, we were like we were trying to do like a FTO podcast episode, and they had me like like Dad, just cut, just just cut it. Like like we don't talk about stuff I don't, we don't even want to talk about. So let's let's just cut the episode. But they kept talking about how much they love money and like how money like uh. It's how they they want to get more games, but like you know, when we're not on on audio, they talk to me about how, hey dad, can you imagine if all this stuff for free? What would you do if that happened? Xbox what? Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> See, you and my I mean, kids are probably having a lot of conversations, man. Because <laughs> that's the thing that like we didn't have, like gaming yeah. subscription services weren't a thing. No, they weren't. Oh, you got me a photograph. I'm looking at the fire emblem right now, actually. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. That's that's yeah. interesting. So that's yeah. in a game that's probably rated everyone 10 and up. So who knows? All right. Well, that's that's smooth. My goodness. I'm going to get person to <laughs> damn you. Damn you. <laughs> Don't download fire. Trust no. me, that is not, a, that's not the worst one. <laughs> No, I don't think it is either. You don't have to send it to me. You don't have to send it to me, but I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> we always end up here, D. We gotta. We, we do. We really do. We're, it's like we skate around it all the time. <laughs> I had this idea for a while. I wanted to make an FTO red. It's like just put nothing but adult content. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe when my kids are a little bit older, I'll do that. But not right now. Not right no, now. that is not what you say. <laughs> Your Reddit doesn't need to be the reason you're. No, <laughs> you're right about that, dude. I don't need that in my life at all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, so um, there were a lot more, and I'll just send you the link to this list Please. so you can put it in the show notes. Uh, but the last big game that I kind of wanted to talk about before we wrap was Lies of P. Is get it got a demo and got a release date. Say that, say that name again. Lies of P, like L I E S O F P, like Pinocchio. Out. All right. Because it's a Pinocchio Souls like game that seems yeah. to be like Bloodborne inspired, and I know. I was literally uh, gonna ask you why you why you say Pinocchio as an example, but now I get it. All right, I was literally about to ask about to ask you that question. <laughs> this was wild. Yes. So you see, what 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 like is this? Did you say this was Bloodborne? It's a Souls. Yeah. So the it's being referred to as a Souls like, but okay. Everything I've seen of it, I didn't get to watch the trailer today. I did download the demo to my PS5, and if I like, this is why I ha- don't have time for Zelda because I'm doing shit like downloading the Lies of P demo. <laughs> Just a dip later in a, a post yeah. Elden Ring world. Yeah, <laughs> this is that fucking, this, my God, that's wild. Just to put that into perspective, I hear you, but like, man, yeah, I'm watching the trailer right now. It's it's about two, no, it's about three minutes long, four four minutes long actually. Oh my goodness! And I mean, that's is that the one from today? Uh, it's from August actually. Okay, so yeah, that's probably I've probably seen whatever trailer you're looking at. Then I just okay. haven't seen the one from today. See if I can find one from the day. Why might I see like some gameplay? Uh, on that IGN list, you can scroll down. It's one of the like playable trailers that's on this IGN article I sent you. The 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 CG is phenomenal. This is a part of <clears throat> the actual gameplay as well. My goodness! Right, that uh, I'm pretty sure everything you're seeing is in engine because we haven't seen too much pre-rendered stuff out of the game. This is wild, man. This is really good. Crisp as hell. I wonder what the... What the <clears throat> you seen what the mechanics were like in the first trailer? Did you get a chance to see what that oh, was yeah. all about? I saw the, like, parry. I saw the souls light combat. And it's more Bloodborne, which I, if they would just release a 60 frames per second patch for Bloodborne or Bloodborne something, 
I don't something. think that's the first time you said it to me about Bloodborne. I think well, uh, no, <laughs> that that's something a any Souls player like would tell you. What, like the two things that they want are that Elden Ring DLC and okay. for because Dark Souls. I want to say one, two, and three, and now Demon Souls and Elden Ring. You have the option to play at sixty frames per second. Bloodborne is locked at thirty, and it just doesn't hold up. But it it never got optimized for the PS4 Pro, despite being a Sony first party game. It never got any like it runs the same on a PS5 as it does on a launch day PS4, which is just like <coughs> horrible. I'm yeah. watching this. There's not much. There's not much gameplay being shown. There's all only like, like like fight cut scenes, but not much gameplay. So I, I don't have an idea what the mechanics look like, but the graphic wise looks gorgeous. Um, I can't tell what kind of like it is. Like I don't like like what you said, but <clears throat> the way it looks, it looks like a Prince of Persia like just by looking at it. But I don't know. Well, you got me. You probably scrolled past it. There's a new Prince of Persia game coming. I think they opened. Oh the show. seriously? Yeah. Oh they're... my goodness, who am I? Oh. <laughs> I'm on top of it. Oh, Prince, there it is. Of, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown is coming next year. No way. Dude, I'm on top of it. <laughs> I'm on top yeah, of I'm it. Yeah, I'm like, you're just kind of like, <laughs> you. the fact that you haven't had this list in front of you this whole time, and I'm frantically, I'm like, fuck, he's talking about this game, bringing up this. I gotta. And I'm just bringing up shit that's on the list. Dude, I have not looked at any of this. No joke. My goodness. It's osmosis. You get Baldur, oh, like look, here. Game. I'm just going to. Lord of the Rings, Baldur's Gate, <laughs> Call of Duty, <laughs> Path of Exile. Oh. oh my goodness. A new Call of Duty, really? Netflix Witcher Season 3 trailer, Warhammer 40k, like Space Marines 2, Nicolas Cage is coming to Dead by Daylight. Yes, Your Grace is what? getting a oh, sequel. I heard about that. Witchfire comes to early access in September. Wait, is Witchfire? No, Witchfire is not what I think it is. It's from the creators of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter and Bulletstorm, but I thought this was the game that was coming from the creator of Stardew Valley. Uh, I think that's like Witchwood or something. But, yeah. I'm still watching this Prince of Persia. Like, like, <laughs> yes. It's a 2D side scroller. And like like the protagonist is a dark skinned black dark skin man with uh, with locks, and they got a woman inside of it also in the game. But still, it looks like a two D side scroller with three D cutscene effects, and uh, it's pretty cool. Did you see the Alan Wake two cool trailer again. from? I still haven't watched that. I still haven't watched that trailer at oh, yeah. all. It looks black boring. female lead. Me, I still haven't watched it. Wait. Seriously? Yeah. Alan Wake 2 doesn't look boring. Alan Wake 2, like, it's, you're playing as Alan and, what's the name of the character? Uh, like, I, I watched a, the picture, like, like maybe 30, like 30 seconds of a, of a Saga preview. Anderson? Like, yeah. Saga, like it was, so it was yeah. Really me. I'll pull it up, I'll pull it up. This is gameplay. Do I need to watch gameplay? I don't think I need to watch gameplay until you need a trailer. If I watch gameplay, I'm just going to get annoyed. It's three minutes long. Fuck it. All right. Damn it. And it looks stupendous. Damn so, it all. It looks gorgeous. So I was you... wrong. This looks <laughs> awesome. Like I, I even see like, like the, the controls. They got your life bar. They got your pistol. And like it looks like it's, it, it takes its time with you. Dude, son of a bitch. This looks really good. <laughs> I can see why fans are hyping it up. Yeah, Alan Wake 2 has looked good. It's just, it's a horror game, and we talked about it last time, if I'm going to play a horror game, it's either going to be Dead Space Remake or Resident Evil 4 Remake. Yeah. You said you want something like that, that give you that fast intensity, but also has a little bit of fear factor attached to it. Yeah, I remember. But, uh... Yeah, it, has, it has to be fast for you. But this is this is definitely more of my speed. It reminds me of that, that one puzzle game on both PlayStation when it first came out. I forget the name of it. But these two cops, detectives... Heavy Rain. Yeah. I'm a little bit of Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain, rain is cursed. Game. I keep hearing Heavy Rain has come up. You are not the first person this <laughs> month to bring up Heavy Rain around me. What is going on? Really? What is going <laughs> on? 
It was a it was a landmark game, man. Like it really like like they've uh, done out two. The PS3. Hold on, I totally get that. I totally I've played Heavy Rain. I own Heavy Rain. Okay. Like I, I under I get it. They've made two games well, since then. One of which was also yeah. on the PS3. Yeah. Featuring well, Elliot good. Page. <laughs> yeah, that didn't do very well at all. But Detroit. Detroit Become Human was up for Game of the Year. Like, Detroit Become Human, like, their mid-PS3 follow-up to, like, that kind of storytelling and that kind of gameplay. Like, they... That's why it was revolutionary, yeah. But I'm just really... Just how... That's a deep cut. Like, most people don't know what Heavy Rain is, and somehow, me, one of the, like, few people who play... Well, like, I don't even... Was Heavy Rain just this huge landmark thing that I just didn't know well, yeah. notice? It it started out the PS3. Like it, it was the game that, that most people when they first got a PS3, they kinda had to play. Like you had to play that game because like you didn't get many other games that came came along with it. So Heavy Rain was that game to play. I think like they did it on purpose, to be honest with you. I'm being like I feel like like PlayStation did that on they made them play that game on purpose to get a feel for the controls of the PlayStation. Like how when uh Wait, was that a launch? Hold movie. on, was Heavy Rain a launch game? I think it was. I think it was. I can't be certain, but I think it was. Because it Quantic Dream, they, they like, I... no February twenty ten. And the PS three came out. I could look. November two thousand six. <laughs> So it's pretty, it's pretty damn close. Four years later, that's not pretty close. We're not even four years into four the. Four years. P- yeah, from two thousand six to twenty ten. You just give me a second, so I can see this for myself. All right, there's that. <laughs> Let's see heavy rain. Then why was heavy rain so big? I don't. I did not think heavy rain was big. I would. That's like, I wish I had a deep cut comic book to like, hey, like Invincible <laughs> pre the TV show. That's like Invincible coming up multiple times in casual conversation with like. Comic book wise, you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would never happen. Or Snot Girl. <clears throat> like to give you a deep cut in the comic world, Snot Girl. Like that's like Snot Please. Girl coming up more than once. In the span of a week. That's really deep. <laughs> That's really deep. 2006. And then 2010. What the fuck? That's weird. That's why I'm really like, I don't know. The reason. Oh, so big. The reason well, I, I knew also- about Heavy Rain is because a girl I was dating got a PS3 and got Heavy Rain with it. It's funny. That's really funny. Because like the woman I was dating, her sister was playing the game. And that's how I saw the gameplay and action for the first time got to play it as well. So it was through a woman that like I, I actually heard about Heavy Rain. I mean like all the women were playing that game at that time. I mean it's a you know crime drama yeah. before yeah. true crime podcast. So. Before Murderinos were was a thing <laughs> exactly. There you go. All right. So Ooh. the last story I know I said I was try- trying to get <laughs> all of them out. Yeah, it's just so much, man. So, I know. the Atlas Instagram account leaked the existence of two new Persona games. We have Persona 5 Tacticia, which is coming in November to... Right now, we just know Game Pass, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Windows. But, like, last year, during the... Xbox press conference when they announced Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden were coming to Xbox. They came to PlayStation the same day. So I'm expecting like at the end of the press conference when Atlas, because these are obviously the Xbox trailers. The Xbox show is until Sunday. So it's going to be interesting to see like when the press releases about these, when these games are officially supposed to be announced. And they right. show up, like, will I get a version of the graphic with a PS4 slash PS5? Because the Persona 3 Reload is something that 
Persona fans have been asking for for a really long time, and that's coming early 2024. So we're going to have that and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in the same time frame, and possibly Honkai Star Rail. It's impossible see, to keep that, up. All that being said, and like I got to say this too, uh, Lilith from Diablo 4 is oh, hot no. as hell. So, I mean, I know I shouldn't be attracted to her, but I very much so. That, that's my toxic trait, apparently. Being attracted to demon women. My goodness. Lilith, well, else. I got one for you. Look up Symmetra's demon skin from Overwatch. Oh. Oh my goodness. This is like comic book style too. My god, look at that. See? You got me alive talking about this stuff too. Oh my goodness. Look at that one. She like fire in her chest, man. It's like a lava demon. See, I'm getting too into this. See, like how guys are in the furry sometimes? I mean like the demon people. And like and pirate women. One eye women with pirate patches. See, I told my whole hand. There you go. I just lost <laughs> the game. I'm f I fold. <laughs> just like everybody watching this and listening to this just <laughs> lost the game all right yeah yeah if, yeah, if you see one with, with eye patches I nope d i it. can't let you go any farther we gotta wrap the episode <laughs> this has been it. episode 31 of table cheese thank you all for coming out and joining us i've been anton six of the cheesy controller podcast this has been d of seo <laughs> nerd talk he's facing the other way on the video version <laughs> Don't like fine. Take it easy. And keep it cheesy. Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.